Well, folks, it's great to be here with you all today. And you know what? It's great to be alive. That's right, Ronnie. And welcome to another edition of uh, the Ministry of Propaganda's News of the Week. I'm your host, Richard Nixon. And joining me today, my esteemed colleague, Ronald Reagan. Thanks, Dick. We've got quite the lineup for you today, folks. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the latest headlines together. That's right, folks. Every week, right here on the Ministry of Propaganda's News of the Week, we'll give you a rundown of the most important stories making headlines. Whether it's politics, world events, or just some good old-fashioned scandal, you can count on us to uh, keep you informed. Ronnie, let me fill you in on the latest from the Middle East. You see, the U.S. has been busy targeting those Iranian-backed groups in Yemen, the Houthis. Iranian-backed, you say. Sounds like a game of cat and mouse, Dick. It, indeed, Ron. The U.S. took out an anti-ship cruise missile belonging to the Houthis. And get this, it was the third day in a row they'd been going at it, just this week. My, my, they sure don't waste any time over there, do they? Not a bit, Ronnie. The U.S. even bombed some sites in Syria and Iraq linked to those militias. And later in the week, they conducted a drone assassination on the streets of Baghdad, which inflamed tensions with the Iraqis. Well, I always said a firm hand can be necessary in those situations. Right you are, Ron. It's all about showing strength without tipping the scales too far. Uh, you know, Ronnie, it's quite the paradox. The U.S. wants to avoid a wider war, yet here they are bombing three countries. Ah, uh, Dick, the old, we want peace, but we'll drop bombs just in case strategy. Classic. Well, let's talk about that Blinken fellow for a moment. Seems like Blinken's got his hands full over in the Middle East. Trying to uh, prevent the Israel-Hamas conflict from blowing up into a full-blown regional war is no small feat. Uh, rallying allies around a proposal to release hostages in Gaza. That's a tall order. Three U.S. soldiers killed last month, six Kurdish advisors killed this week, and the U.S. assassinating a member of an Iraqi militia on the streets of Baghdad a few days ago. And Netanyahu doesn't give a damn. He rejected a ceasefire plan, too. Despite Blinken's best efforts, the region remains a powder keg, ready to ignite at any moment. Actually, can you believe um, Blinken's audacity, Dick? Trying to conjure up peace out of thin air without addressing the root issues. It's like trying to pull a rabbit out of a hat without a hat, Dick. The Palestinian question isn't just going to disappear with a flick of the wand, especially while the Israelis are making rap songs about genocide. Exactly, Ron. Blinken must think he's some sort of magician like Harry Potter. <laughs> well, if he's Harry Potter, then his spells seem to be misfiring. More like Anthony Blinken and the half-baked peace proposals, or Anthony Blinken and the prisoner of peace negotiations. Sounds like a never-ending saga. And don't forget Anthony Blinken and the philosopher's genocide. Mm, quite the page turner, I'm sure. Maybe he should stick to diplomacy and leave the magic tricks to the professionals. Let's move along, Dick. Now hold on to your hat for this one. Last week in the wild world of espionage, we've got a pigeon making headlines. A pigeon? You've got to be kidding me, Ronnie. No joke, Dick. This feathered fella was released from a veterinary hospital in India after being held for uh, eight whole months. Apparently it was suspected of spying for China. But get this, it was cleared of all suspicions. Turns out it was just an innocent bird after all. Some sort of racing pigeon that was actually from Taiwan. A pigeon spy? Now I've heard everything. But think about it, Dick. All the James Bond pigeon movies. Uh, oh, of course, Dr. Pigeon. One of my favorites would be on Her Majesty's Pigeon Service. Pigeons are forever. The man with the golden pigeon? The quantum of pigeon? Good one, but for me, the winner is the pigeon who loved me. Uh-huh. Ha-ha. <laughs> well, Dick, it seems we have quite the situation brewing over in Ukraine. 
Indeed, Ronnie, what's the latest on the Eastern Front? The Ukrainian troops are outmanned, outgunned, and digging in for a fight against the Russian forces. They're facing waves eh, of Russian soldiers, relentless in their advance. With critically low ammunition, the Ukrainians uh, can't afford to fire at just one or two advancing enemy soldiers. So the Russians have adapted, moving forward in smaller numbers, to try and overwhelm them. Clever strategy, but are the Russians making any significant gains? Not as much as you'd expect, Dick. Despite pouring enormous resources into the fight, they're only making marginal progress. In fact, over 13,000 Russian soldiers have been killed or wounded in just two months of operations around Avdivka. Uh, let's not mention Ukrainian casualties. It undermines the war effort. And Congress this week, oh my God, delaying funding for the war effort. Uh, uh, I tell you, that war is a race, a race uh, between the last uh, Ukrainian soldier and the last U.S. dollar. It's anyone's guess which one will run out first. From the Ukrainian side, uh, but the fact Zelensky fired their top general, Zelensky, on Friday, doesn't lead me to think he was confident or happy with how the, the war was going for him. He wants a change. Well, Ronnie, it seems like the British royal family can't catch a break these days. Right, first they lose Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. Then they're dealing with scandal, self-exile, and now King Charles III's cancer diagnosis. It's like a real-life soap opera over there, Ronnie. The, the palace drama just keeps unfolding. And with the king suspending his public engagements for cancer treatment, it's bound to cast a shadow over his reign. You know, it's a wonder how they are going to run their country at all without a king. Oh, absolutely. I mean, who needs elected officials and a functioning government? when you've got a crown to do all the heavy lifting. Right you are. I'm sure the sun never set on the British Empire because the king was too busy trying on different crowns. And don't forget about the royal scepter. Can't run a country without <laughs> waving that around a bit. Well, I'll tell you what. All this kind of talk makes me want to dump all the tea into the harbor. Sometimes I think the Brits would be better off with a good old-fashioned cup of American brew. Ha! Huh. It sounded like you were talking about coffee and tea, but really, your joke was about republicanism versus monarchism. Yes, Dick, that was the joke. Thanks for spelling it out for us. You're a regular master of subtlety, Ronnie. I guess that's why they called you, you the great communicator. Ah, uh, thanks, Dick. But let's not get too carried away. We wouldn't want anyone accusing us of stirring up trouble, now would we? Absolutely not. We'll leave the stirring to the tea and coffee drinkers. Much safer that way. So, a number of companies are already integrating AI into their business to cut jobs that were created during the pandemic. People are saying it's only going to get worse. Other jobs are next. You know, buddy, I don't give a damn about these tech companies cutting jobs. As long as AI doesn't come knocking on my door, I couldn't care less. Uh, the pragmatist speaks. I suppose as long as the robots aren't eyeing up the presidency, you're in the clear, Ronnie. Exactly. Let them automate all they want. Though just as long as they don't mess with my ranch and my acting gigs. Let's hope they don't get any bright ideas. I don't think you are ready to hand over the reins to some Silicon Cowboy just yet. Yo, did you peep the Grammys? Uh, Taylor Swift just slate, winning her fourth album of the year. She's literally breaking records left and right. No way. T. Swift is straight up legendary leaving icons like Frank Sinatra and Stevie Wonder in the dust. Totally, bro. And how about Billie Eilish snagging Song of the Year? She's got that vibe, you know? Oh, for sure. Billie's bringing those chill vibes to the game. No cap. And Miley Cyrus taking home Record of the Year? 
That's some next-level stuff right there. Uh, absolutely. Miley's always been a trailblazer. And big props to Victoria Monet for scooping up best new artist. She's gonna be huge. No doubt. The Grammys were straight fire this year, fam. I can't wait to see what next year brings. Well, Dick, looks like Trump's got some legal troubles brewing. Indeed, Ronnie. The federal appeals court rejecting his claim of absolute immunity is a significant blow. You know, I'm not sure how to feel about this. On one hand, it's important for accountability and upholding the rule of law. But on the other hand, it's going to be a messy ordeal. You hit the nail on the head. This could turn into a circus, especially if it ends up at the Supreme Court. And with the possibility of, uh, of a trial before the general election, it adds a whole new layer of complexity. If Trump were to win, he could have the power to dismiss the case or pardon himself. True, Dick. It's a sticky situation all around. We'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. But there are more outrageous things afoot, Dick. I can't believe it. This Tucker Carlson person is going to interview Vladimir Putin. The nerve of that man. <laughs> Outrageous, Ronnie. Look how dare he engage in journalism and allow uh, people to hear the perspective of a world leader. <laughs> it's not his place to challenge the narrative and interests of the U.S. government. Absolutely. It's not for ordinary people to try and decide for themselves. The audacity of Tucker Carlson to think he can just bring different viewpoints to light. I've got it. We must bring this outrageous story up at the next meeting of the Illuminati. Ronnie, we cannot let this stand. Indeed, brother. We must ensure that only the approved narratives are, are disseminated to the masses. Carlson's actions are a threat to our control and influence. We'll put a stop to this nonsense, Ronnie. The power of the Illuminati will prevail. But hold on. I have an even better idea. The shock, there can only be one solution. It's Don't you dare, Dick. Don't even think about it. Declaring one of those stupid, vague wars. War on drugs kind of things. They're still making fun of us for that crap. And then the war on terror. My God, what did that even mean? What now? A war on truth. A war on violence. A war on bombs. A war on war, a war on what? But Ronnie... No buts, Dick. We need to come up with something more concrete and more strategic. None of these blanket declarations that just lead to more problems down the road. Well, I guess you're right, Ronnie. Um, we need a targeted approach, not another endless war with no clear end in sight. Oh. That's the spirit. Together we'll figure out a solution that's effective and doesn't end up becoming a punchline in history books. Now let's talk about Pakistan. So the military's cracked down on, on Imran Khan, the former prime minister of the country, and his party has cast a dark shadow over the upcoming elections. It's troubling to hear that there hasn't been the uh, the, the usual lively campaigning. It's like the, the heart has been sucked out of the election process. And with people feeling demoralized by the military's intimidation tactics, it's no wonder they're que questioning the legitimacy of the entire electoral process. Um, okay. We're delivery, but thanks. Yeah, sorry about that. I sipped some water now. We'll have it to keep a close eye on the situation in Pakistan and hope for a resolution that restores faith in the democratic process. But you know, Ronnie, I, I kind of think the Taliban or whatever extremist lunatic group it is has a pretty straightforward election strategy. They are basically saying, we don't like elections. We will blow them up. Yes! Blow up the election stations. It's almost like it's um, uh, a war. A war on elections. Oh, for God's sake, man, please stop. That's enough of that kind of talk. So let's stick to discussing sensible solution, shall we? Okay, okay, enough with the war stuff. I'm sorry. I just like bombs. Okay. A big, beautiful B-52. Slowly sliding towards me. She opens up her bomb bays. Oh, man. Ha! 
Did you hear about Nikki Haley, Ronnie? She got outvoted by none of these candidates in Nevada's Republican primary. She lost to nobody. That's a real blow to her ego, isn't it? But really, what is she trying to prove at this point? Trump will be the candidate, as long as the Supreme Court doesn't stop him. I think you are right, sir. I think you are right. And <laughs> that's a wrap for this week's uh, edition of the Ministry of Propaganda's News of the Week. We hope you've enjoyed staying informed with us. That's right, folks. Remember, keep your eyes spilled, your minds sharp, and always question what you're told. Until next time, stay vigilant. Signing off for now, I'm Richard Nixon. This is the Ministry of Propaganda. Thank you for listening.